Insane asylums of the early 19th century often conjure horrific images of tortured patients who are mistreated, neglected, and abused. A social reformer, Harriet Martineau, noted, In pauper asylums, we see chains and straitcoats, three or four half-naked creatures thrust into a chamber filled with straw to exasperate each other with their clamor and attempts at violence, or else gibbering in idleness or moping in solitude, all the while at the mercy of their often malevolent caregivers. While cruel practices were the norm in many asylums in the early 1800s, developments in the treatment of mental health over the course of the century led to significant changes. These frontiers of change in the treatment of the mentally ill were blazed by two dynamic reformers, Dorothea Dix and Dr. Thomas Kirkbride. Dorothea Dix was a tireless social reformer who was inspired to help others resulting from her own struggles with mental illness and depression. During the 1830s, she went to England to recover from a severe bout with tuberculosis. While there, she toured several madhouses and saw firsthand the deplorable conditions in which mental patients suffered without proper care. When she returned to the United States in the 1840s, she committed herself to the cause of lunacy reform. Her investigations led her to prisons and poorhouses where she found men and women suffering from mental illness confined with hardened criminals locked in chains, covered in filth, and without adequate water or sustenance. The sick and insane were confined in cages, closets, cellars, stalls, and pens, chained, beaten with rods, lashed into obedience. Dix would write in her groundbreaking 1843 report to the Massachusetts legislature. Her findings on the conditions in which mental patients suffered led to numerous reforms at the state level across the nation that saw new frontiers in the treatment of the mentally ill being explored. The mid to late 1800s would bring much needed change to the housing and care of those diagnosed with lunacy through the enlightened efforts of Dix and her colleague, Dr. Thomas Kirkbride. With the attention of the public and of lawmakers now focused on blazing this new frontier, Dr. Kirkbride's theory that creating a truly curative environment for the mentally ill began to take hold. Kirkbride's background in working with the mentally ill began at a Quaker hospital in Philadelphia. He grew impressed with the moral treatment the patients in this facility received and now wanted to bring that treatment to the murky world of those stricken with mental illness. Kirkbride would rise to the position of superintendent of the Pennsylvania hospital. While he always dreamed of being a surgeon, he could not bring himself to abandon the most vulnerable and misunderstood members of society, the mentally ill. Like Dorothea Dix, he would dedicate the remaining years of his life to making his plan a reality, a plan that involved not just moral treatment, but dignified living spaces involving the most cost-effective measures possible. Kirkbride would write, Professional friends regarded my plans as ill-advised, but I see this opportunity of starting a new institution and developing new forms of management. In fact, I dream of giving a new character to the well-being of the insane in every aspect of their care, treatment, and quarters. Soon, the Kirkbride Plan will be implemented across the nation and around the world. Dr. Kirkbride theorized that the very buildings in which the mentally ill were to be housed would be as much a part of their treatment as therapy and medication. His moral treatment of the insane would involve massive structures that would allow for open space, sunlight, recreation, and comfort. Kirkbride also insisted that his buildings be constructed in rural and pastoral settings. This would be a far cry from the prison cells and almshouses in major cities where the mentally ill were previously confined like criminals. Buildings like the Trans-Allegheny Lunatic Asylum in Weston, West Virginia, seen here, were insisted upon by Dr. Kirkbride to be tastefully ornamented and architecturally designed to be en echelon or slightly V-shaped when viewed from above. The design would permit long wings with wide hallways, numerous windows to allow for natural sunlight to fill the rooms and halls, light pastel-colored walls to allow for a soothing quality on the interior, as well as open recreational areas on the grounds. As Dr. Kirkbride planned, the combination of the building and grounds acting in unison would permit a special apparatus to those stricken with lunacy. 
As was the case with all his facilities, Kirkbride wanted the Trans-Allegheny Lunatic Asylum to be as self-sufficient as possible to reduce the financial burden on the states and communities in which his hospitals were constructed. Typical main ideas of Dr. Thomas Story Kirkbride. He was the main archip or the main idea behind the driving force of the asylum due to the failure of the other facilities in the state of Virginia. The Staunton and Williamsburg facilities were massively overpopulated and starting to wane heavily on the state of Virginia itself. This facility was actually designed independently to operate on its own without being under the control of the state of Virginia. Within a very short period, over 300 Kirkbride buildings were constructed, not only in the United States, but around the globe. A hospital for the insane, Kirkbride dreamed, should have a cheerful and comfortable appearance. Everything repulsive and prison-like should be carefully avoided. There is no reason, he continued, why an individual who has the misfortune to become insane should, on that account, be deprived of any comfort or luxury. This ideology of fresh air, sunlight, physical exercise, and social companionship, in addition to space not only for privacy but for growth, was one of the first individuals in the entire world to suggest that the mentally impaired first and foremost were people. Up until the establishment of the Kirkbride ideology, mentally impaired were actually viewed as a kind of second-class citizen. You had absolutely no rights whatsoever, you weren't counted on censuses, and you weren't really considered a person until Dr. Kirkbride came around and was like, these guys are actually real people and we should treat them as such. With his plan in place on an international scale, Kirkbride's efforts of combining the very best practices in the moral and ethical treatment of the mentally ill through both treatment theory as well as architectural planning now came to fruition through his efforts for the compassionate care and housing of those in need. As new frontiers in the treatment of the mentally ill were being blazed by the likes of Kirkbride and Dix, the enormous costs of running these facilities, however, caused plans to greatly deviate from their intended goals. For example, the Trans-Allegheny Lunatic Asylum, which intended to house 250 patients, saw its population increase over tenfold by the 1950s. Kirkbride's dream became a nightmare for those crowded into this facility and countless others across the nation. As a result of overcrowding and improper care, some 500 patients died inside the Weston, West Virginia facility before it closed its doors for good in 1994. Sadly, even into the 21st century, funding, staffing, and the ongoing stigma attached to mental illness has caused the very path into this frontier to be, in many cases, deviated from because of cost-saving efforts and a lack of understanding and empathy toward the mentally ill. However, Kirkbride's legacy is not one of failure. He was instrumental in advancing the idea that the mentally ill deserved care without disdain or curiosity, and while his plan of providing spacious buildings with a limited capacity for patients never materialized as planned, the frontiers he opened in the care and general well-being of those suffering from mental illness have vastly improved as a result of his efforts. It is up to us as a society to re-examine this frontier and blaze new paths to bestow care and compassion for the most vulnerable members of our society. Today, there are more than a hundred abandoned Kirkbride facilities in the United States. Many of them are not all that different from the Trans-Allegheny Lunatic Asylum. Few stop to wonder where all these massive structures originated. But in fact, all these buildings were part of a treatment regimen developed by a singular doctor. A physician who was obsessed with architecture and how it could be harnessed therapeutically to cure those suffering from mental illness. Inspired by crusaders like Dorothea Dix, Dr. Thomas Kirkbride's frontier must be explored and studied. All of his successes and all of his setbacks must be re-examined to better deal with the mental health crisis that currently exists in the United States. Otherwise, we may be doomed to repeat a much darker side of our collective history in which the most endangered and unprotected become invisible and forgotten.